Hi, I'm Johnny from UltimatePaperMache.com and I'm still working on my Basset Hound. He looks a lot more like a Basset Hound than he did the last time you saw him, but I've still got an awful long ways to go. And I really thought I would get so much more done today than I did, but I'm trying to keep these videos into segments where you could do each step in like one hour. I took longer than that today and I didn't do the back of him. I did a lot more fiddling around <laughs> as I always do. So I want to go ahead and get started right away and uh, show you what I've done so far. If you'd like to make a Basset Hound 2 and you'd like to use my pattern you can download it for free at ultimatepapermache.com slash Basset Hound or you can go ahead and make your own pattern and make some other kind of dog if you would like to and, and use the same methods that I'm using but just make a different kind of dog. I've got a whole video to show you how to do that and I'll put a link to that down below. In two previous videos I got the pattern put together and then I filled in all the spaces and kind of solidified the body. While you weren't looking I took a saw to it <laughs> and uh, changed the angle just a little bit of the body by cutting out some of the the paper and pattern in the middle. It, it just wasn't bending quite the way I wanted them to so I just changed it a little bit. A drywall saw works really good if you have to do some surgery on paper mache. I didn't use aluminum foil before just because I didn't have any. We were in the middle of a blizzard here in Minnesota and I wasn't going to run to the store under those conditions. So I went ahead and used the crumpled paper and masking tape. If you don't want to use aluminum foil for the legs and the head, you don't have to. Go ahead and use the crumpled paper and masking tape. It just takes a little bit longer. It's a little more difficult to get a nice smooth finish. To start with, I'm going to fill in uh, the spaces in between here with the aluminum foil and hot glue. I do have a whole lot of uh, photographs on a computer right over there. I got my old computer set up in here so that I can be looking at a lot of photographs of dogs while I'm doing this. So now I'll go ahead and speed up the video. I'm pretty sure that you'll be able to see the exactly what I'm doing. I'm just using the aluminum foil and the hot glue the same way I would if I was using clay. You add some here, add a little bit more there. If you've got some poking out, uh, then you don't want it to. You just kind of squish it down with your fingers and move on. I will be making some changes like... Uh, more changes to one of those back legs, uh, doing a little bit surgery if necessary, and just keep working until I have it the way I want it. I know that this is a slower project than you might be used to in a video on YouTube, but I really want to take my time with this guy. I've already got a, a spot picked out for him right next to my dodo bird, and I want him to be really nice when it's done. The one thing that I'm doing very differently though, because I do have that video camera on and I'm trying to keep these this series uh, broken up into fairly small chunks, um, I'm stopping after, a, you know, well, it was supposed to be an hour, but this, this time it was almost two, <laughs> but um, I am stopping sooner than I normally would. My usual day when I'm working on a sculpture is to um, start my work my actual work uh, around 6.30, answering emails and, and comments on YouTube and on my blog. And then uh, after that's all done, I'll go back into the studio and I'll start working on my sculpture. I might take a, a couple of short breaks to take the dog for a walk or have some lunch, but I'll just keep working straight on probably until 8 or 9 o'clock at night. I, I'm totally obsessed. <laughs> I'm very fortunate that I don't have an outside job so I can actually do that. But I know that most people have to break it up into little pieces and work when they have a few moments free. So that's why I'm, I'm splitting it up like this. I really did want to get the feet done this time and I just wasn't able to do it um, within the time allotted. But next time, we'll get them done next time. I want some really cool feet. I think I'll actually make oversized feet and oversized ears just to make them really fun. I'm just going to play with them, but we need to get all the basics on there first before we can start um, making personality changes to him or making him look exactly the way we want him. Um, there's there's a, a, a basic structure that we have to have until we can actually get to that point.
Now you are going to see that I, I did some surgery on that back leg. If I had taken a little bit more time making the pattern, I wouldn't have had to do that. But I created the pattern based on a standing basset hound. And I just didn't realize that the back leg was going to be in such a um, very different configuration than a standing back leg is. And so I did have to make those changes. If you're using my pattern and you want to make a basset hound of your own, then you might want to make some changes to that back leg <laughs> before you start. Um, look at some photographs, see how it's it, it's situated in the photograph that you really like, and then go ahead and change it before you cut it out and, and add it to the pattern because it really would have made it a, a lot easier. But, you know, th this is what happens when we're... Um, sculpting on the fly, uh, moving things around, getting things the way we want them. Sometimes we just have to change our mind and do something over. Okay, so I worked for over an hour to get this done, so I really need to stop now. It's nowhere near done, but we're getting closer. And the next video, we're going to start on his feet. And we might get to the head next time, but I'm, I'm just not sure. Now, in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and finish cleaning up this part just a little bit better. I'll finish the other side, of course, while you're not looking. Now, if you would like to follow along and make your own basset hound, you can download my pattern. It's at ultimatepapermache.com slash basset hound. It's a free download. And be sure to watch that other video that shows you how to make your own pattern if you'd like to make some other kind of dog. Now, go make something, this one or anything else, and then come visit me, ultimatepapermache.com. I'll see you there.